everyone, and welcome back to the Capella Podcast, your favorite parenting show where we talk about all the things related to early childhood, babies, the joys, the challenges, the questions. My goal is to address it all in this show, to really leave no stone unturned and to have this show be a comprehensive resource for every new parent in the world. This week, I'm really excited because I have a very special guest on. Her name is Nuanya, and she is a devoted mother and the admin of a prominent European formula feeding support community. In this conversation, we're going to talk both about parenting communities and their significant impact on parents globally, but we're going to particularly focus on formula feeding options. We're going to talk about parenting and the questions that people are asking Nuanya and her community. You're going to see it's very funny. And she's going to give us a lot of really good nuanced advice for parents and everything related to feeding, digestion, questions, what's going on with my baby and so on and so forth. I really can't wait for everyone to listen to this conversation because I learned so many things and I'm pretty sure you will too. Now let's get started. As usual, if you prefer watching us and getting all cozy, then there is the video recording of the interview on Capella's YouTube channel. So feel free to go binge that. And thank you so much for being here. Enjoy this one. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Capella podcast. And today I'm joined by Nuanya Sorzano. Um, and I am really excited about this episode. We're going to talk about parenting communities and how they can help support parents all around the world. So hi, Nornia, how are you doing? Uh, and hi, you being here today. <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm so happy to be a part of this podcast. Awesome. Um, I think it's, uh, it's something that, um, you know, parents definitely need, um, you know, just to get a feel of, especially new parents, you know, to get a feel of, you know, how to do this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, you're right. And that's why I love doing it. And I love to learn from experts who come here and kind of share their experience. So Nuanya, tell us a little bit more about yourself so that we know you and we get to know who we're talking to. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love for you to go over everything done. Um, so I am a mom of, of three children, um, two boys, eight and seven. And then I have a six month old girl, um, very beautiful bouncing baby girl very very active um you know so it has been um a wonderful parenting journey um you know a lot of ups and downs roller coasters you know as any parent would know how it is (laughs) um and i also am the admin um for the largest european formula um feeding group parenting group called Kendamil Hip and Holly Formulas Parent Support Community. Um, and in that community, we basically just assist um, parents. Most of them are from the US um, and, uh, you know, being able to su- supply the best formula for their particular infant. Mm-hmm. That's super interesting. So can you tell us a little bit more about how it came about and how you started to run this community? Uh, what's the backstory? Um, so I was first I was part of the community. Um, I think um, for me, um, development in young children, babies, uh, I, I think that's one of the most important um, parts of a part of a human's life. Um, and, you know, I so I was very interested in it. I joined the community and uh, um I used to give advice, get advice as well. Um, and then I was asked to be um an administrator on the on the community. Um and you know, I was so grateful and you know, thankful that you know people thought that my advice was, you know, good enough to that I can be an admin on it. Um and uh, and well, yeah, that's that's basically how I, I became the admin. Um from there I you know, I really enjoy speaking with parents because each parental journey is very different. Um, and so I think, you know, it's really important to treat each person as an individual and not just give blanket advice. Because sometimes we, we get that a lot, you know, either from, um, you know, a doctor or from, well, um, on especially on the Internet. It's really 
you know, you just get <laughs> just blanket advice and it does not necessarily pertain to you or to your child. Um, yeah. So that's the purpose of the community as well. That's awesome. Um, I think it's so important because I've talked to hundreds of parents over the last like two years. And I what my impression is, and I'd love to hear your opinion on it, is that new parents would much rather get advice from other new parents on communities than even their own mom or their doctor or their you know, whatever book, um, they'd rather learn from other parents, other new parents. So is that something that you yeah. find too? And is that why these communities? Oh, are yes, thriving? definitely. Um, and I think I think having all the advice is um, definitely is important. Um, yes, getting um, some, you know, advice from your doctor um, and from your close community, your family members and that sort of thing. Um, but then, you know, sometimes they are a bit disconnected. Um, because they aren't currently going through the specific situation that you are going through. Um, so you would find where they are telling you, oh, sleep when the baby sleeps. That's not always applicable, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, because there's so much more to do. Um, you know, and yes, it's very important to get your rest in. Um, but, uh, you know, I think getting the experience of someone who is, um, you know, going through or have just went through what you just did, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it helps a great deal. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Um, that's what I've seen, too. And so it's a community that's very focused on formula feeding, but you seem to have many other discussions about, you know, a lot of other topics yes. like sleeping. And oh, whatnot. yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the, the main topic is poop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we are mainly European formula um, because and that's because, well, I, I should say that in 2022, um, there was the um, a formula shortage in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, which made our group even more. Um, it, it brought a lot more people to our group than before. Mm -hmm. um, and that is because, well, yeah, there was a formula shortage. And moms just really needed to get to feed their kids. And that's basically what it was, you know. So um, we had a lot of, 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 of moms who were panicking and wasn't sure, you know, where they're going to get, um, you know, the next formula for, you know, formula for their kids and that sort of thing. Um, so that that particular point in time was a was I, I would say was a crisis. Mm -hmm. you know um and luckily um you know, i should say thankfully the different brands that um we speak about in our group um were able to send their formula um from the uk you know to the us um and mm -hmm. be able to supply moms um mm -hmm. with formula for their babies <laughs> mm -hmm. um some yeah. of the formula like we but well, some of the formula that we um, speak about in our group like Kendamil, Holly, Luluka, Hip, um, and you'd find that the quality of the formulas, um, you know, very it's is a is a really high quality. Um, so you get mm -hmm. you know none of the things that should not be in formula. Yeah. <laughs> in, um, <laughs> yes, in those brands. Awesome. Yeah, it's it was. I remember it was so crazy. The sh formula. Sh it was uh, crazy times. Um, I'm glad we're kind of out of it yet now um yes so all the parents that are in your group i i'm guessing it's predominantly moms but you know I, i'm guessing there's yes and we do have some dads we do have some dads okay. as well <laughs> yes um so they have made the choice you know to formula feed um are their babies kind of very young or is that are there mostly people who have breastfed before and then moved to formula or is there also part of the moms that just formula fed from the beginning? And uh, how do they feel about this whole thing? Because it's such a big debate kind of in our society when it shouldn't be because fed is best. But yes. um, do they also try to find a place where they relate to other people because their environment might judge them? And how do you yes. see all of that conversation evolving? Yes, definitely. Um, so... As you said, fed is best. So once your baby is happy and healthy, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people choose formula for many different reasons. Um, and it's not okay for anyone to judge, you know, what this specific person, um, you know, and the reasons why they may be giving um, their, their baby formula. Um, so, you know, some moms, it, it may be due to... Uh, 
a medical condition. Um, it could be because of um their working situation, um, you know, and just or, or or maybe just even mental health. Like, you know, you've tried, you know, breastfeeding, it's not working out. Um, and and so you just really need your baby to be healthy, and that's the most important thing, right? Um but uh, we have a, a wide variety of parents who come on the group um, for their kids. Uh, we have some that do combo feed. We do have some that are strictly bre- they strictly breastfeed, but they're thinking about switching to mm-hmm. formula in the future. And then we also have parents who know from the jump, so they are they are pregnant. Um, you know, in you know twenty six weeks pregnant, and then and they're looking and doing their research from now because they know that they want their child to be formula fed and they're looking for the best formula for them. So your community is basically also a place where people come to kind of get, um, you know, insights and learn about this whole crazy world of all these different brands and everything. Yes. Um, because I guess it's <laughs> very overwhelming, especially when you get a new baby, you have so many things to think about that just trying to understand all of that is pretty complicated. So um, I is. think it would be super useful if you could kind of give us a breakdown, like if you're just meeting a mom who's pregnant or who tried breastfeeding, it doesn't work. How can you start making sense of all the different formula brands? How are they kind of classified? Can you give us an up, like a, an overview, sorry, of uh, form- sure. the formula feeding world and what's good, what's less good <laughs> yeah. and more. so um we there well different types of formula obviously they're from you know cow milk formula goat milk formula um there's also um hydrolyzed formula so um you know if it is your baby can't um or or is not able to process cow milk the cow milk protein mm-hmm. um you can probably try a breakdown of um the cow milk formula um Mm -hmm. we if that's the case i usually try to tell moms you know try try a goat milk formula first Mm -hmm. because the um curds are generally smaller in Mm -hmm. in goat milk um and that's that's and and it's very natural you know so Mm -hmm. we try to you know try to keep things as natural as possible Mm -hmm. right so um i know for sure kendamil has um their goat milk formula it's uh readily available on target shelves right now so Mm -hmm. which makes it great because you know you don't have to now wait for any shipping times or anything like that you could pick one up try it and see if it works with your baby Mm -hmm. um you know i'm personally my daughter she she uses candomil classic Mm -hmm. right i love I love, love, love the formula. Like sometimes I would even take a little scoop and put it in my coffee in the morning. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> but it tastes so good. It really does. It's, okay, that's great. Yeah, it really does. Um, you know, and so formulas like Candomil, um, it's usually, it's well, it is a whole milk formula um, mm-hmm. and it contains all of the good fats, right? Mm-hmm. So there are other formulas who, that, you know, they use skim milk um, and that's because it's a it's a cheaper option for the mm-hmm. the brand to do right but mm-hmm. Kenamel uses um a whole milk formula mm-hmm. and and so you get all of the good fats in there right and then they will you know do their added fats and whatnot um it's also palm oil free mm-hmm. so um the your palm oils is sometimes it can be um associated with constipation um, and so, you know, you try your best to just have a baby that is happy and not cranky at all, because, you, you know, you're going to get a baby who's going to be up all night anyway. <laughs> right. And so you're just hoping that you can, you know, make things as easy for your baby as possible. Um, mm-hmm. So that really helps. Um, it's also fish oil free and that sort of thing. Um, there's holly as well. Um, and I think when you're choosing a formula, you're looking for something that is closest to breast milk, right? Mm -hmm. So you're looking for like a um, weight to casein ratio that is similar to to breast milk. I think those things are really, really important when it is you're looking for a formula. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, you know, anything that that stays away from, um, you know, unnecessary starches and that sort of thing. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I wrote down fats, good fats, no palm oil palm oil no starches um yeah okay i think we get a good picture 
Um, that's really interesting. Um, and ha- so, you know, what are some, um, you know, tips of adv- or tips or advice pieces you would give to parents who are maybe hesitating because maybe some of them are, um, you know, considering breastfeeding or formula feeding uh, and they're maybe coming to your group to ask uh, what you think and what's best for them and so do you have you ever maybe you haven't but have you ever helped parents make that choice for themselves and what were the key things they took into consideration when making that choice yeah um well firstly I would like to say that it is um you know go at your own pace just because you um you know don't don't be pressured by outside influences when it comes to the way that you choose to feed your baby um always listen to what's happening with your child um first before anything else um and if it is you are considering you know switching to um formula I mean, maybe breastfeeding and you want to switch or maybe even just combo feed just to be able to supplement, you know, one or two feedings during the day. Um, I would say do it very slowly. So do a, a slow transition um, because baby's digestive systems are, you know, they're it's very sensitive. And so any change in diet, you would find that they um they will get a lot of spit up, which is expected. So even if yeah. you do a, a slow transition, you will get spit up. Um, you may, um, you know, get, you know, changes in their bowel movements and whatnot. Um, so those things have to be expected, gas as well, um, when you are doing a change. Um, then on, during the transition period, um, you know, have some patience. <laughs> yeah. um, and I say that because I've, seen sometimes where moms you know they buy one formula it doesn't work for two well they in their mind it's not working for two days Mm -hmm. they switch it up to something else and then they switch again and sometimes they go through you know four five six different formulas and that's not really good for the digestive system of of your child um so it's it's really important to give at least two weeks I usually say three weeks but for the very very least you know two weeks unless you are seeing something that is um that you know should not happen you know where it's like excessive mucus in um Mm -hmm. in the in the child's poop Mm -hmm. (laughs) we speak a lot about poop (laughs) it's normal (laughs) it's I think it's the territory (laughs) so yeah um yeah so unless you're seeing blood in in stool or or a lot of mucus so now mucus is something that will happen at some point in time right um but what i'm speaking about is excessive mucus Mm -hmm. right in the in the stool um Mm -hmm. then you would want to you know change the formula at that point um Mm -hmm. but if it is it's just you know some spit up um gas uncomfortable um I will wait, you know, two weeks, yeah. three weeks, and and then if it persists, you know, then you will um, consider switching to another formula. Um, yeah. And just to be sure, and just to let everyone know that spit up is normal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, babies have um, their their digestive their their digestive systems have not fully developed, mm-hmm. and so. Um, they are not it's actually the last system for to develop in babies Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense that makes sense yeah (laughs) because they haven't if you think about it they haven't been using it at all you know before they yeah they're just in their little womb and they're feeling comfortable and they're just being fed and they just don't even know how it happens Exactly. right and it's only when they are out into the world that's when they begin to use um that whole system Mm -hmm. so we have to give them you know time grace and patience um uh, to to to, for that to fully develop so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and if you think about it even in adults the digestive system is something that easily be you know oh yes kind of for troubled sure. for different ways so it makes sense that it would even be bigger for a baby um yes so you talked about excessive mucus blood in the stool or what would that be a sign of like when should the parent just change formula or go to the doctor why would a kid have that and what other kind of bad things could happen I guess maybe allergies or things like that with formula um, that people need to be really aware of um yeah 
So if you see excessive mucus or blood in the stool, um, it's a sign that your baby may have an allergy or intolerance mm -hmm. to okay. cow milk tea. Um, and so I would, you know, definitely go check out your doctor's, your, yeah. your, your child's doctor, um, yeah. you know, just to see what, what can be done. If mm -hmm. you think that, let's say you made an appointment and, you know, it's far, the, the appointment is far away. Yeah. Um, and, but you're seeing that something is definitely wrong and you know that, you know, mother's instinct, you know that something yeah. is wrong. Um, you try to go with like a hydrolyzed um, uh, formula. So uh, it, it, that that it basically what that is is that it breaks down the proteins. Um, mm -hmm. so it's much easier for the um baby to digest. Mm -hmm. Um, you can also try going to goat milk formula as well. Um, but it, for me, it will it depends on you know how serious you you think the situation is, right? Yeah. So you try to go to a hypo hypoallergenic formula. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, obviously go to your doctor, find out what's going on um, and then allow your doctor to guide you from there. Yeah. Um, one thing yeah. you said at the beginning of our conversation, which I found was super interesting, is you said that poop was the main kind of thing everyone yeah. discusses. Yeah. And it makes total sense because uh, parents I heard are really worried about, uh, in general, are really worried about their baby um, poop, uh, for lack of yes. a better word. And so... If that's the most discussed topic, then can you kind of give us an insight of what people usually ask? Do they like post pictures and other people kind of uh, give them insights or um, yes. what are the conversations around that topic and how um, can we support people who have questions around their baby? Um, so anyone who is um, joining our group, be prepared for poop pictures. <laughs> we have a lot. Okay. Um, and it's basically because um, you get to tell a lot about what's happening within mm -hmm. the baby. Um, by you know what's happening in their poop um, and not just as we spoke about um, maybe a, a baby who is intolerant or has an allergy to cow milk protein um, but also um, we this, what is discussed a lot is um, constipation um, because you know even as you said with adults right sometimes sometimes we have uh, adults that are regular and sometimes mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you go a couple of days yeah. without you know pooping and that kind of thing and um so parents get really concerned um because they expect that their baby should be on a clock you know and that's mm -hmm. not necessarily the case right mm -hmm. so um you would find where um especially with newborns you they would probably go about 10 times for the day right mm -hmm. and it's you know it's almost liquid you know and you know some parents get concerned and they're wondering you know is mm -hmm. is my child does my child have diarrhea um you know and if is, is he healthy what's happening um mm -hmm. that is very normal expected i the first time i experienced it i was like what is happening i am changing diapers like it's going out of style mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so, um, and, and it was concerning for me as a new parent. So I could imagine, you know, everyone else, you know, it is, it is something that um, will bring concern, but it is totally normal. Um, as the baby develops their um, digestive and as their digestive system matures, um, you know, they will be, you will get less, less poop, <laughs> right? Um, and so... <laughs> Um, and and it and it varies. It varies per um for per child. Sometimes it might be twice for the day. Um, mm -hmm. sometimes babies can even go up to seven days, and um and you don't get any poop at all. You know that also mm -hmm. sometimes parents get very concerned about it. Um, the mm -hmm. most important part is looking at the poop itself. Um, mm -hmm. and seeing if it is. Um, once it is either runny or it has like a peanut butter consistency um, and the colors vary from yellow to green to dark yeah. green, that's fine and it's normal. Um, mm -hmm. Where you want to be concerned is if it is, if you get like pebble, pebble poop, um, that's mm -hmm. a sign of con constipation. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if it is chalky and white, mm -hmm. you definitely want to see your pediatrician. Um, mm -hmm. and or if um, as I said before, blood or excessive mucus mm -hmm. in stool. Um, I I want to go back to the mucus a bit because yeah. you know it is normal to see bits of mucus sometimes, especially when they're teething. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might just be 
you know, extra excess drool that, um, you know, their body is processing. So just, they're just getting rid of it. Um, mm -hmm. um, so don't be too worked up or worried if it is you do see some mucus um, mm -hmm. in their stool. Um, but, you know, if it's if it's excessive and it's been and it's happening day after day after day, um, mm -hmm. that's when you want to take a look at it and, and check your doctor about it. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. wow. Uh, I just had a question pop up while you were talking about all this conversation is, um, are there any, um, you know, for example, I don't know, tech companies or something where that would have been developed by someone to kind of analyze poop and uh, do all these things? Or is there really nothing that exists for parents? except i yeah. guess books and the internet that's um, a really it interesting would be a great question. idea to just kind of analyze it is. baby poop um it is it? because you, you learn so much about babies through their poop and, mm -hmm. and what's happening um i i can't say concerning tech companies but i know that they 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 are testing for there is testing for like my microscopic um blood in stool because mm -hmm. sometimes you may not you may not see it mm -hmm. um but it's there you know mm -hmm. um so i mean that's definitely something you can get on <laughs> yeah exactly i was just thinking if we you could like develop some sort of um technology that can analyze the poops and kind of reassure parents um yes if that's such a big thing so i don't know just food for thought um yeah but it's definitely super interesting this whole um poop conversation um <laughs> and could i ask you now like looking into the future with your community what kind of future plans do you have do you have any goals any plans for the community uh how do you envision the community's impact in the coming years in especially in the broader conversation of formula breastfeeding um yeah can you can you tell us a bit more about um how the impact can become even larger uh in the future yeah um well um in terms of my vision and goals for the company for, for the um community sorry um i would love for us to actually do a meetup at some point in time a mm -hmm. physical meetup I, I think that would be really amazing um you know and to be able to get parents you know even in within their own districts um mm -hmm. to to meet and and have that sort of support because sometimes um it it is important yes to get the conversations going online um but sometimes when you can actually you know meet up you know um yeah. personally um mm -hmm. you get a stronger sense of community um so that is definitely something that i would love to to look into um mm -hmm. in the future um and and basically just really continuing to grow the community um have parents continue to give advice because mm -hmm. I, i i always say that i'm not the one i i don't own parenting <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> um So many others have so much good, valuable advice um, that they can give and that they do give. And, um, you know, so just keeping parents who are more experienced, you know, keeping them engaged um, to yeah. be able to assist younger parents um, and then even vice versa, because, you know, there's no such thing as as, as knowing too much. Right. Yeah. And you always learn in all of your interactions, mm -hmm. you know, from day to day. And yeah, so I'd really just love to continue growing the community and ensuring that, you know, all the parents um, get the answers that they're looking for. Yeah, that's a great mission. Um, by chance, do you have any also doctors in your community or is it just 100% parents giving advice to other parents? Or Yeah, we also... We also do have um, mm -hmm. doctors. We also have um, biochemists. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, who are who are there, um, and um, you know, giving proper sound advice to parents mm -hmm. as well. You know, so mm -hmm. um, our group is is very diverse. Okay. Um, yeah. that's amazing. Um, we're kind of almost reaching the end of our episode, but um, I always ask my guests a couple of uh, questions at the end that are uh, very, you know, in every episode. And I know I didn't tell you in advance because I want to get people's <laughs> uh, live reaction to that question. And no, no worries. There's no, <laughs> it's not a big thing. That's but <laughs> if you had a parent, a new parent right now in front of you who literally just uh, became a parent for the first time, what are your top three pieces of uh, pieces of advice that you would give them? It could be about anything, um, but what are the top three things that you would tell them given your experience as a mom and your experience 
literally helping tens of thousands of other parents um what would you say to them what would be your top um my first um really the most important thing i would say is to give yourself grace mm -hmm. um it's the first time you're doing it it's you know you are it's a big transition it is a very very big transition um so give yourself time to adapt um that's one two reach out to um a community um try to get as mm -hmm. much support as can um because you know it's a village raises a child it's not just you know one person um and it's so important to have a community around you um you know physical or on the internet um it's you know it's it's so important um and three you know just get as much rest as you can because you need it <laughs> yes 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 you definitely need it um yeah that's great advice I really relate to that because I have heard so many times that isolation is really the worst or the biggest challenge in being a new parent. And as you yes. rightly said, there it takes a village. But now for a lot of families, the village is not around because the parents live like at the other end of the world and um, they don't have that support system around them, which makes them feel yeah. even more isolated. So join yes. communities, join Nuanya's community for sure. Uh, if you're a new parent or even a more experienced parent. Um, and yeah, where can people find you? Give us like details of, I guess you already said your name, but um, yeah, give us the details of uh, how they can find so you. You, how they can, can find you can find us um, on Facebook. So it's Kendamil Hip and Holly Formulas Parent Support Community. I know it's a mouthful, <laughs> um, but I'll yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so you can check her link um and um and you know feel free to ask any questions at all no question is a stupid question um mm -hmm. because we're all learning and we're all growing to get i love this well nuanya thank you so so much for being on the capella podcast talking about breast like not breastfeeding formula feeding uh, <laughs> and, oh, sorry that's so ingrained in my brain and all the challenges that come with it um thank you thank you thank you i hope you keep thank growing you so this much, amazing community i'm so grateful that you have us on, on have have me on your group like on your podcast <laughs> <laughs> no worries <laughs> thank you thank you so much okay bye Wow, that was such a great one. Again, thank you so, so much for listening. I'm truly really grateful even if just one person gets something out of these episodes and feels less alone than for me, I've done my job. So thank you for your support. If you liked it and if you want to keep hearing from us, it would be awesome if you could put a little review or a comment on the app that you're using to listen to this podcast episode too. And we will see you very soon with the next episode all about parenting while traveling. So that's going to be extremely exciting as well. And I really hope I'll see you guys there. Thank you for being here today and have an amazing rest of your day wherever you are.